You ever heard of the Goat Man? I have. Well, what if I told you it wasn't the Goat Man? Hold on. There's more than one. It was was a Goat Man. A Goat Man. Apparently, apparently these Goat Men are roaming all over this country, Eric. (laughs) You know, you're talking about, you know, immigration across the southern border. I'm more worried about goat people. (laughs) What are they here for? What's their agenda? They're here to take over the world. When I first started looking into this and first proposed this idea, I thought it was a singular thing. I thought we were going to talk about a goat man. What I learned very quickly is that it is not a goat man. It is multiple goat men. The man. goat men. They're goat men. And why do they all have to be men? That's sexist, didn't it? I know. Well, considering they mostly go about bare chested, that might be part of it. Oh, okay. But how is That's there a more? whole different story. If there's only goat men, how can there be new goat men? Well... I it's kind of like the we Smurfs can get into dilemma. the origins of goat people. You know, <laughs> there's only one Smurfette, but there's lots of other male Smurfs. We're going to look at the many stories of goat men from across America tonight. Shall we? From a child born into this world, we are taught what to believe. Close-minded, we become fearful to be deceived. Still, we desire to know what lies beyond that locked door. The art of the storyteller, conjuring tales of legend and lore. History hidden, lost knowledge, things forgotten and the unknown. These are the things that direct us and will set the tone. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Nightmares on the Lost Highway. So to give sort of a baseline and just to say, okay, this is what we're talking about. When we talk about Goatman, we're talking about a creature that looks like a human goat hybrid covered in coarse hair with the furry hind legs and hooves of a goat, a goat's head typically with horns and the whole nine yards, but the torso and arms of a human. Usually that's also fur covered. And and in some stories, they tower over the average person. And these are not the satyrs and fawns of mythology that just want to, you know, copulate, but don't get me wrong. That's, that does come into the story too. That's a portion of the story. Um, these are usually ax wielding maniacs. They'll, they'll attack you. They're out to kill. They're out for blood. And and then you have the whole goat man that's got that whole demonic aspect, like a demon. It comes up a lot. Well, goat eyes are very, oh yeah. Like they don't creepy. I don't like looking a goat in the eyes. We used, we used got to have a couple eyes. goats. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, they but look yeah. satanic. But but you know, again, they're all over the country. They're terrorizing young couples in parked cars. They're stalking through the neighborhoods, murdering pets. There's tales of goatmen breaking into homes and having their way with whoever they find within. And they don't really care if it's a man or a woman. From some of the stories, they so. don't seem like nice people. These things, things are creatures horrific depending on where you're at and which version of the story they're never good i'll say that there's not a good goat man there's not a friendly goat man these goat men are always out for something i was gonna say blood but it's not all they're limited to (laughs) but again they're everywhere now the first goat man story that i really kind of found was that of the maryland goat man Mm -hmm. and again these things are coast to coast man now, this one, of course, is your, your typical goat-human hybrid. This one wields an axe, as seems to happen and with a lot of goat man stories. That's right out of Dungeons and & Dragons. And he's been blamed for terrorizing lovers, decapitating dogs, and attacking cars, and is known to shelter in the woods of Prince George's County, Maryland. Now, the story of this particular goat man really took off in May of 1971 when a University of Maryland student named George Lizama completed an undergraduate folklore project on the goat man that was later added to the Maryland Folklife Archives. And in his story, he said that the goat man was located on Tucker Road in Clinton, Maryland, and documented one possible encounter with that goat man, which was that of a young boy at his birthday party. I will say I love the stories on this are very specific. Tucker Road. Yeah. Some of the stories oh, I do. always like you know, this a lot road, of a lot of the bridge cryptids that we do were they're so vague. You know, they're in the Appalachian Mountains. You know, like that's over several states. But the a lot of these stories are very specific. I liked that aspect. But back to the young boy at his birthday party. He's having fun at his birthday party. I think they're playing baseball. When the baseball gets hit and it rolls into the woods, so he goes in to get his ball and he comes back screaming. And his mother asks him what he saw, and he says, 
The dark thing that stands in the corner of my room at night. <laughs> now. What? What makes you think that's a goat man encounter? Nothing. Nothing. And yet it is still lumped in with the goat man story. I like the story. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. But really, there is, there's, there is one sighting specifically reported in 1977, which is a good year. I'm going to throw that out. There. Yeah, very good year. Star Wars. <laughs> Me. Oh, was, you too? <laughs> you and Star Wars in the same, same year. year. Oh, that was my a good year. gosh. You didn't know how good you were going to have I it. I didn't know how good my <laughs> life is. Uh, so there were two couples out on a date when they heard scratching sounds outside of their car. I can only assume they were distracted, not really paying attention to what was happening outside the vehicle. So the driver reaches up, he turns on the lights, and there in the headlights is revealed the goat man in all of his goat glory. <laughs> goat glory. Uh, he starts running at them, and he hits the car with his axe. They did manage to speed away and get away with only just a scratch. Now, later that year, reporter Karen Hosler discovered the project that the, the, the gentleman had written in 1971, that folklore project. So she reported on it in the Prince George's County News in October. Now, she placed the goat man near Fletcher Road in Bowie, and uh, she extensively covered the theory that the goat man's origins could be traced to the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center, where the stories claim that he was once a scientist. Oh, I loved this Named story. Dr. Stephen Fletcher. This is right out of the, like, Marvel Comics kind of thing. And he was working in the Agricultural Center on an experiment with goats. When the experiment backfired, and mutated Fletcher into a half-man, half-goat creature. And then he began to aggressively attack cars near the Beltsville, Maryland area. Now, there's other versions of the story. One is that he was conducting experiments, and he combined his assistant's DNA with goat DNA to create the goat man. Again, this is right out of the comics yeah. of like the 60s and 70s. And then there's still yet another potential version for this goat man's origin, and that there was a hermit who lived in the woods and could be seen walking along the road late at night along Fletchertown Road. And just over the years, he, he changed from just a, a hermit to a bedraggled hermit to a, a goat-faced monster just out there stalking the streets. Now, although the stories really seem to have originated in the 70s, some legends say that the stories are actually set in the 30s in Prince George's County, and then it started with a series of disappearances and the deaths of multiple dogs in the area, which would later be blamed on the goatmen. However, due to the condition of the remains, most of the experts would say this was likely due to passing trains. So, uh, and again, trains will become a, another part of this too. They, they seem to pop up a lot in goatman stories. Well, one thing before we get too far, you mentioned a lot of these goatman stories, they, they yield axes. Yep. That is bizarre to me. I mean, I... Again, I'm a Dungeons and Dragons nerd, but a Minotaur, obviously a half bull, half man, they're known to carry axes. But I, the goat man carrying an axe, that really kind of threw me off guard because it was like, whoa, we got a, a cryptid by definition that is yielding a axe. And we're not talking like a necessarily a chopping axe. It seems to be more of a. I always imagine like a fireman's axe. Yeah. Like, you know, like a yeah, double like a sided weapon. axe, a weapon. It's crazy. So in St. George's County there, of course, the Maryland area, the stories of the goat man have continued to circulate, especially among local students. And the sightings of graffiti that says goat man was here are not uncommon. And law enforcement routinely received calls of sightings back in the 70s, especially. But many were pranks. Always got to have those pranksters d diluting everything, messing everything up. University of Maryland folklorist Barry Pearson, and might I say, folklorist as a job title? Sign me up. How do I get that? That would be job? great on a business card. He said that the legends of the goat man in the area began long, long, long ago and were only further popularized in the 1971 through 77 time frame when the death of a dog was blamed on the goat man by locals and that bored teenagers just keep the legend alive, repeating these stories, suggesting that the creature is there to attack couples, particularly along the local lover's lane. I was going to ask, what the heck did the dogs do to these goat men? I mean, that the seems dogs, to be their favored victim. You know, they like to go after dogs. And I think that particular story started when they found the head of a dog and none of the rest of it. Mm. But, you know, if you're struck by a train, your parts don't tend to stay close together. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, again, it goes back to that, like, oh, it was probably this. So I've got to ask, I mean, as Bill alluded to when we started this, 
He thought it was a singular. Now, I had heard of more than one goat man, but I was awestruck with, you know, I'll just present the question, just how many goat men are out there? I found just very quickly 20 or 30 stories, some extremely short, not enough, obviously, for, you know, uh, mentions in the podcast. I found but. references in, in at least 10 states. Yeah. At least. So this is borderline like Sas- Sasquatch Bigfoot. I mean, kind of around. I found two or three stories that sort of blurred that line. That yeah. I, I didn't pursue them because it was too Sasquatchy, but definitely like there was one where it was, I can't remember what state it was in, but it was definitely, they were walking along. It was a huge, hairy, bipedal creature. Some people said it had goat heads. Some people said it didn't. And I was like, I don't know. That's like a Sasquatch to me. Well, in some of the stories I had, it went back after its favorite victim a dog and you know you do hear bigfoot and sasquatch stories where that's it, um, that's a victim the the falc monster yes didn't yes it, in there there's a story falc where Arkansas. it was had a dog yep you know it, and as bill said these creatures the description do vary the lines are blurred but most of us would probably envision like he said the fawn or like a satyr type creature you know the fawn uh some of you may not even realize what you saw, but if you were watching like the Chronicles of Narnia or Pan's Labyrinth, or even back in 1994, Page Master, you know, these films, these big screen films all had versions of a fawn or a goat man like creature. So there's, as Bill also said, the history goes back, I would say medieval time frame. I mean, it really goes back there far, but it does seem to skew and, and alter, you know, the descriptions and everything. One of the stories I came across, which is quite popular, is Poplick Creek Goatman, which is kind of in the Louisville, Lexington, Kentucky area. Again, very specific. It is a railroad bridge in Poplick Creek. Now, you might be thinking, how, how come the Maryland Goatman, you know, we mentioned, there's even rumors that it could read and write in that story, but this one doesn't. Well, the answer is simple. This one knows magic. He doesn't, you know, need to write. So this was right up my, my, my line of interest. Many witnesses claim to have seen this particular goat man using hypnotism, voice mimicry to lure in victims. When he has them within his reach, he grabs them and throws them under a train, which kind of alludes back to the dog. Oh, it was hit by a train, you know, kind of deal. Apparently, that's how a half man, half goat has fun. Because uh, they don't have TV to watch, obviously. So might just go out and grab people, lure them out, mimic voices. Some said that it may even sound like a deceased loved one. Uh, somebody that was there like on a hiking trail with them that's just out of sight. And they'll be like, hey, I'm over here. Come over and look at this, you know, kind of deal to lure them in. And then would throw them under a passing train. There, there's that. Well, apparently he still carries an axe, though. Yeah. I did find reference to that. Does still carry an axe. You know, how such a wretched creature came to be. Well, there's many stories, but two of them I thought was the most interesting. The first version claims that the goat man was a circus freak who vowed to get revenge on humans who are not half man and half goat, but instead are half man and half man, meaning he thought they were half men because they would pay Uh to come see him and mimic and mock him. So he wanted revenge. Now, the second version talks about a farmer who sacrificed goats in exchange for satanic powers. Now, he died and came back a half goat. I'm not sure how that qualifies to be a satanic power, but, you know, again, as I mentioned, old references, there are some demonic entities that definitely look like goat men. So possibly, you know, there's that. I also found a story that the potential origin was that it was a government-created monster that escaped after a train crash in the area of that bridge. Oh, wow. That's right up so, X-Files there. And and apparently people who have heard the public monster say that it makes a sound like the devil sexually assaulting a sheep. How would anyone know what that sounds like? <laughs> it's, it's really specific, isn't it? That is very spe- You don't just come up with that reference. I, wow. Well, we're going to drift down to Texas and talk about the Lake Worth monster, yet another goat man. And let me just tell you, there's more than one goat man in Texas. But Texas is big. It's got Texas room for lots. Big. Yeah, Texas is big. 
Uh, in Texas folklore, this legendary creature inhabits the Lake Worth area at the Lake Worth Nature Center and Refuge just outside of Fort Worth. Again, you have the part man, part goat, but this one has fur and scales and scales. with long clawed fingers. Now, sightings were first reported in July of 1969. The first encounter happened when three couples were parked in a clearing man, late at night doing... What were they doing? I assume what any young couple, they were watching stars. Oh, Eric. watching stars. Sir. Okay. Well, around midnight, a beast leaped onto the car from the trees above. It tried to grab one of the women, but they sped off before it could grab her. When police were shown the 18-inch long gash in the side of the car, Dang. they opened a full investigation. Now, there was another sighting in which a group of people had gathered in a clearing known for dumping near the lake. I can only assume for dumping purposes, but I don't know. Just trash like dump. Trash dump, I would assume. Okay. That was what I assumed. I'm, I'm thinking, grimacing, like, did they find a bunch of dead bodies well, there no. or what? Okay. The goat man appeared on a cliff overhead, looking very angry, and threw a tire over 50 feet towards the group. Oh, there's your dumping. Okay, we got tires. Now, everyone, including a group of sheriff's deputies that were in this group, fled in fear from the monster, with one witness is saying that the, the beast made a sound like a, a pitiful cry, like something was hurting him. Now, there was a picture of this goat man taken by an Alan Plaster that got published in the local papers, though even Alan later said that he believed he'd been pranked. Whatever it was, it wanted to be seen. Now, of course, when you have a monster in your area, the locals began driving out at night trying to see if they could find the beast. <laughs> and uh, one reporter stated that the legend actually was spread via summer camp tales, with camp counselors sitting around the fire saying, now listen carefully. And you'll hear his cry on clear night. I can totally just like envision tonight. that. Yeah, I totally envision that. Reports of the Lake Worth monster ended in the fall about the same time that school started again. Well, that's convenient. Now, in 2005, a reporter for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram received an anonymous letter claiming to be one of three high school students who decided that in the summer of 69, they wanted to go out to Lake Worth and scare people. Those pesky teenagers. Also, in 2009, Fort Fort Worth, Texas Magazine published a report about an unidentified man who said he'd come forward and had been the perpetrator of the tire throwing. Got all these fakes out there. Yeah, though that, that one may have been a hoax. Can you imagine getting a tire chucked from an overhead cliff? That, imagine that, getting hit. My gosh, that is scary. I don't yeah. care if it's a goat man or a person Still or a whatever, just a tire coming at me. Still a monster if you're going to throw a tire over a cliff at somebody. That's one time when I was hit by a thrown tire. This is by far one of my favorite. Goatman stories. It's Denton, Texas. Again, Texas is big. We got multiple goatmen there. This is a good one, too. I like this one. Oh, in particular, the old Alton Bridge. Again, very specific. This story where I got my information was shared by a gentleman named Sean Treat, uh, who is a past professor at the University of Texas and a local historian, and added a ghost tour guide. Again, I would love to have that job. That would be fun. It revolves around a, a man named Oscar Washborn. He was a successful goat farmer, explains Treat. He was known for quality meats and cheeses and milk, but also purses, waistcoats, and things like that that he would make out of the tanned hides of the goats. Treat is a former professor at the University of North Texas, and as I said, a local historian and a ghost tour guide in Denton, and he will, if you're in that area, you can sign up and he could actually take you to this bridge. He tells that, and according to the legend, Washburn supposedly lived right off the old Alton Bridge in the late 1930s, during a time when iron truss bridges served as a key connection point to rural North Texas. Now, the main passage to Dallas came through that area. There was a big bunch of basically nothing between there and downtown Denton Square. Trent says this was just pure darkness. Uh, man, imagine, you know, train going through at night. There's no lights. There's no nothing. There's nothing out here. It's just dark. Now, first built in 1884, the old Alton Bridge is the oldest of its kind in Denton County and something that helped earn it a spot on the National Register of Historic Places as of 1988. That's the year I graduated, so that's the year. Hmm. Now, legend has it that the historic bridge was so important to Washburn's business model that the goat farmer put up a sign to help customers find him. Because again, he was kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. When you came across, explains Treat, you would see a sign that says, this way to the goat man. 
Now, Oscar Washburn was a successful farmer, uh, building a life for himself there in Denton. He was also a black man, something that caught the attention of the wrong white folks in town, especially during the time frame. They couldn't believe the audacity of this African-American entrepreneur to be hanging his sign right up there on the bridge. And so that's what prompted them to come engage in the killing to make an example of him. That's right. It's been said that one night the local chapter of the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, marched out to Washburn's home, kidnapped him, lynched him over the side of the old Alton Bridge, ending his life. When the Klan members made their way down the creek under the bridge to take a look at their work, Washburn's body was gone. It had vanished. Figuring that he had somehow managed to escape, the outraged mob made its way over to Washburn's farm, where they burned his home down with his wife and his children locked inside. They barricaded it so they could not get out and lit the house on fire. Now, the lore says that this is a revenge story. Washburn haunts the old Alton Bridge as this half-goat, half-man creature, possibly wearing some of the same attire of the goat skins, giving him that lower torso look, like fur pants, you know, that kind of deal. There are old-timers who told in the story that he doesn't take everybody. He never does. Treat explains who he does usually take, seems to have the blood of the clansmen in them. Otherwise, they're descendants of the clansmen that took his life. Now, the goat man at Old Alton Road is a revenge story, one of uh, which the children pay for the sins of their fathers. Now, the whole rumor, the story, the urban legend, if you will, to you can summon the goat man by three knocks upon the bridge as you come across it, And the thought is, as you then walk across the bridge, you've made the three knocks, you will then be judged as you cross it, walking to the other side. In conclusion to this haunting tale, you can sum it up in saying, an ignorance of your past is no protection from its everlasting consequences. Now, to be present, both sides of any good story, I must say, there's little evidence to verify the existence of a black farmer named Oscar Washburn in 1930s in Denton. I couldn't find anything. But when it comes to lynching, the truth is often more terrifying than fiction. But then again, record keeping, especially for African Americans living in very rural areas, were not always the best. So I'm not saying he didn't exist. I'm just saying there was no evidence found. So as they say, I think it goes, the lack of evidence of a story doesn't necessarily mean the lack of authenticity or something. Well, it's lack of evidence is not evidence of absence. There, there you go. So just because they can't prove he wasn't there doesn't mean he wasn't there. He wasn't there, exactly. Well, I have a third Texas goat man. A third, wow. That of New Braunfels, who's living under the bridge at the first crossing on River Road. And the story is if you go late at night and flash your lights or honk three times, the goat man will appear. And there are campgrounds in this area, all around the area that this bridge is in. And the goat man is a regular feature in stories of campers, many people claiming that they've caught it digging through their trash cans at night. One story about this goat man does involve a young couple. Imagine that. Yep, here we go again. Stopping on the bridge and honking three times. After honking the third time, the goat man jumped down on the car from above, and they sped off in terror. When they got back to town... There were hoof print shaped dents in the hood of their car. Interesting. On the one story you said had like claws, but not like fingernails, because obviously it dug into the side of the car. That's that's some weird that's Wolverine claw kind of stuff there. Well, next up I have from Pennsylvania the tale of the Waterford Sheep Man. I think your sheep is close enough to goat. So. Yeah, yeah. This is from the early seventies, uh, a time frame in which the Waterford Sheep Man lurked in the farm field, stalking animals to tear apart and devour. Now, hundreds claimed to have seen this creature, and they dubbed it the Goat Man or the Sheep Man. One witness saw the Goat Man dash across the road near the old sawmill, and then encountered the monster a second time when she was 17 years old. He was there that one night I drove home, and right before I turned into my driveway, there he was, running across the road and into the woods. Now, local Herb Kinney, businessman, he had a friend who was a victim. He said that the, the, the Sheep Man would lay in wait on top of the Waterford-covered bridge on Namier Road, which spans LaBeouf Creek. It was said that the sheep man liked to lurk in the rafters and then jump down on unsuspecting cars. 
He told people, two couples from Erie were traveling into the bridge late one summer night in a dark blue Ford Mustang convertible with the top down. It had started to sprinkle, so they pulled inside the bridge to put the top up when they were attacked. The boys fought off the creature and peeled out, filling the bridge with smoke from the burning rubber of their tires. The roof of the car was damaged, ripped, torn, and mangled to the point it had to be replaced. All four of the young people insisted the incident really happened, telling the tale to their parents. The parents, fearing embarrassment, would not allow any police report to be filed. Hmm. Now, of course, teenagers driving around in a convertible. (laughs) Maybe they got to the bridge with the top only partially put down or put back up. Or, I mean, I'm not saying they didn't get attacked by goat man. Right. Or sheep man. Now, there have been no sightings of the sheep man since the end of the 70s. Now, Wisconsin is also another place with a goat man. They have multiple goat men, too. They're kind of like Texas. They got a lot of goat men in, in Wisconsin. One is found along Marsh Road in Wayawiga, where it supposedly killed two teens on a makeout couch in the woods. A makeout couch in that the woods. That sounds world. just terrible when you read Very it like that. Very sanitary. There's also one in rural Ozaki County. Or you can find one on the thickly forested area just outside of Auburn Lake. And then there's Goatman's Road just outside Key Wuscombe. The story is that this uh, goat man was once a goat herder who was a violent alcoholic who beat his wife to death one night. And then he went out to beat his goats because <laughs> he's just that mean. Wow. One of the goats managed to gore him pretty badly with his horns and left him lying there bleeding and the story goes, way to go, goaty. The man was just too evil to remain dead, and so came back as a goat man abomination, and he now stalks those woods. This goat man has a documented sighting from the fall of 2003 by local hunter Jason Miller. He was in his tree stand during bow season, waiting for his deer to come through, you know, that, that one he's waiting on. And instead of seeing a deer he saw a foul-smelling goat man wander through the clearing. He said it was the height of a deer, the size of a deer, roughly tan and gray in color, with the body of a goat and a human head and arms, and it was swearing and complaining about a trespasser in his woods. (laughs) And then you have the goat man of Hogsback Road. This one likes to dart out in front of unsuspecting drivers, causing them to veer off the sharply curving road and plummet over the steep edge into the countryside below where they're easy pickings, you know, they can pull them out of the wreckage and devour them. Ooh. Now, similar tales in this area go all the way back to the 1870s, where one tale says a a newlywed couple was traveling by wagon at night when one of the wheels broke. Now, the newlywed husband hops down, uh, takes a look at it, and he tells his newlywed bride, hey, you wait here. I'm going to run back to town. We're not that far, and I'm going to go get help. Now, she waited for what seemed like forever when she heard rustling outside the wagon. Now, she peered out, thinking her newlywed husband had returned, and instead saw a hairy beast standing on two legs with horns and a goat's face. She screamed and hid inside the wagon until daylight. Her husband never returned, and in the light of day, she went to look for him, and at the base of a large oak tree not that far away, she found the ground soaked with blood, and in the tree were the remains of her newly dead husband. Ooh, creepy. So goat men are mean, kind of mean, spiteful. <laughs> and they like bridges. And they like bridges and they carry axes. They carry axes. And they don't like kids making out. Some of them can't afford a bridge, so they hang out on a road. They do hang out on a road. They don't like kids making out. They don't like kids making out they on couches like in the woods. They don't like you your lights. They don't like you honking. In threes, apparently threes. They don't like threes. Yeah. Knock three times. Flash your lights three times. Maybe they were made by the devil. Maybe they were made by the clan. They hate dogs. They don't like dogs much. They're Hmm. just spiteful, horrible things. I had no idea there was so much goat men activity. Well, what if I told you there was one even closer to home, Eric? Is this going to be your headline? Sure, let's say that. I had another headline, and then I couldn't believe I had forgotten all about the goat man that I had heard about growing up, which is the Phelps County goat man. So from Phelps County Focus, October 31st, it's a good time for that story, Mm. 2019, the search for Phelps County's goat man. So of course, Halloween is always a good time to sell scary stories and you always want to go out and look for things. I know I always get the the desire to want to go ghost hunting. You want to go out and be scared. So 
One cold and spooky night, when the insider was about age 19, he and his girlfriend got into a car with the uh, insider's best friend, Bob. I'm going to assume when we say insider, that'll be the guy who wrote the article. I guess he didn't want to be identified as someone who's going out chasing goat men. <laughs> I'm an official goat man stalker. Now, why did they hop out in the car on a Halloween weekend as teenagers? Because well, can... they were looking for a couch in the woods. They were, they were searching for the goat man. That's what it says here, Eric. Oh, okay. Now, the goat man was, of course, a legend in those parts. And the insider and his buddy had heard about him for years. And they delighted in running the roads while telling their girlfriends about the goat man. You know, uh, one, it was cheaper than going to the movies and getting dinner. And two, <laughs> when these girls got a little scared, I imagine they sidled up a little closer. It's the perfect cheap date. Now, of course, like all the other goat men we've talked about, the goat man is a frightening half man, half goat, goat beast. It would only be seen at night. As a matter of fact, he could only be seen by one person at a time, apparently, because otherwise you'd never survive the encounter. That's an interesting twist. So, of course, um, how did anyone actually know about the goat man if he killed everybody he saw? No. Yeah. But the legend goes that the goat man presided mostly over cemeteries. And I, I will admit, I've heard the story of goat man's cemetery up near Rolla. I think we tried looking for it one time. I was going to say, now luck. that you mentioned that, that comes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember something about that. Now, in his presence, people had somehow survived to report seeing phantom cars, which would come roaring down the road and then disappear into thin air, which I'd heard that story. Now, they didn't know, of course, why any of that had anything to do with the goat man, because, you know, that's why. Yeah, he wasn't, like, driving them or anything. But Bob demonstrated to the insider and the two screaming girls just what it would be like to fly down old Highway 63 with their lights off in the dark trying to see what would happen, which, that's, yeah. Not really good. <laughs> have you ever done that? I have not. You haven't? I've never done that. It's not safe, Eric. Oh, I know that, Bill. Thank you, Captain Obvious. <laughs> but as a teenager, dumb teenager, I I have done that. And I haven't done it very long or very far, I'll guarantee yeah. you, because that's, yeah, you're traveling even 30, 40 mile an hour with no lights and pitch dark. That's bad. Well, I guess part of the story was that you would fly down the road and flip the lights back on and there'd be the goat man. There he'd be in all of his glory. Uh, now the, the idea one of the girls had was that she was going to, she brought her camera with her. She was going to take a picture of the goat man, but Bob said no, because there were stories of a dead man who had been found with a similar camera and nothing but blurry pictures on the film. And of course, you know, he'd been murdered by the goat man. You can't take pictures of the goat man. You can't provide proof that he's out there. Much like Bigfoot. It just has to be the story. Hmm. Now, eventually, Bob got down to the cemetery in Newburgh, was where it says here. That's not where I remember it being in my story, but... Maybe that's why we didn't find it. That's why, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, you know, the girls were frightened and, and cuddling up and had their camera ready because they were still going to take the picture of Goatman, whether Bob wanted them to or not. I don't believe in this crap. We're going to get a picture. But, of course, at the end of the night, there was no picture for there was no Goatman. No oh. Goatman at all. Now, for years... The insider was, of course, you know, surf the internet. He found some items, some stories, eventually found a story about the Phelps County goat man. And according to him, they were in the wrong cemetery. That was what it was. See, the goat man's out there. He's out there. They were just in the wrong place. He haunts Pine Hill Cemetery between Rolla and St. James, which that's the story I'm familiar yes. with. Yes. This cemetery is also known as Spook Hollow. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, there you go. It's the wrong place, wrong time. So yeah, Goatman, as we said, are very specific, and uh, you're looking at the wrong address. So is, is that cemetery the home of the Goatman? Is it? Well, when the insider mentioned the story to Bob, all these years later, Bob had just one thing to say. Sure, sure, he said. And Bigfoot is just a little short dude with great big feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, my headline, there seems to be enough interest in myth and legend that uh, there is at least one Goatman festival. That you can attend. Of course there is. Of course. This goes back to the story I told of Pope Lake, the Goatman Festival. There is this open air movie, which showed, uh, I think for good reason, based on the date, uh, it was held on October, Friday the 13th in 2023. And it also... Halloween, Friday the 13th. They're good days for oh, Goatmen. Beautiful, beautiful. And it was also the following Saturday, October 14th. But they showed the open air movie of... Friday the 13th, of course, in the open air theater. 
There was also a haunted hike, similar to a haunted house for Halloween, but of course it was, you know, out in the woods, where you would expect to hopefully find a goat man encounter to yourself. They also boasted some musical events, uh, several vendors where you could pick up all sorts of goodies, including authentic, air quote, authentic goat man merchandise. Not made by Goatman, I assume. Not made by Goatman. Probably not made of little stickers goat hide, and and... But yeah. Now, I'm not sure if this is an annual event. Uh, it did seem to be. So if you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, this might be a great October creepy haunting good event to attend if you can't find a nice couch in the woods uh. to make out on. Bring your date here. Uh, I'm almost guarantee you, you will have some Goatman sightings on the haunted hike. Uh, there were pictures taken, so you can take pictures of at least of those goat men, and uh, I'm sure it would be a good time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start by saying here, Eric, I have two questions, but one question has simply spawned out of the conversations and some of the jips and the japes we've made here. <laughs> the the make out couch in the woods, or the lovers couch. lane. I will never forget the make out couch in the wood. Never heard of it before today. You have any weird story about a place like? that you might have taken a young lady? Like, what What would be a weird place? Because I've got a good one. Well, we, we might have been attacked by a goat man, actually, now that I think about the story. No, I guess the only place I would go to would be, like, the Gasconade River. There were several places where we used to frequent and camp and swim, and you know, particular gravel bars. We'd make a campfire, but nothing like, oh, man, there's this old creepy haunted house in the woods or, you know, well, nothing I mean, it like didn't that. Have to be like that. But no, for me, it was a pre driver's license days. I was walking from my friend's house to the, my girlfriend's house I was walking her home after a school dance and we were walking along the railroad tracks and there was just this space where it was just all green grass and open. And I mean, you know, it was been a high school dance. The, yeah. the moon was out. Nature provides, you know, we were, we were there in the grass and it was you really were, awkward. You were star watching, weren't you? Was, we were watching the stars. Yeah. 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 So. Now for my actual question related to the episode. We talked about a lot of haunted bridges and haunted roads. And I'm not going to ask if you've got a goat man story because I'm almost sure if you did, I would know. Yeah. I would have to say a hard no on that one. But, I don't. But knowing each other the way we do. Do you have any good haunted bridge road stories that you, you have in mind? Any? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. One in particular. And I, I will turn this into a, a a funny one because I believe the uh, young lady that we took there is a follower and a listener. So I will, <laughs> I will uh, give out a shout out to only her first name of Lisa. Shout out to Lisa if you're listening. Down by Sunnyview. Now that is out. Uh, I don't know where that's at. East 32. Okay. It's before you get to uh, Falcon, Nebo area. Little tiny, a uh, little restaurant general town there in a church. But there is a, a wooden bridge, uh, steel you know, frame, but it has wooden planks that you drive across. And it's been a local story around here for quite some time that, you know, it was definitely haunted. It was creaky. I will definitely give <laughs> you that. And at the time, in all of my 1980s glory, I had a jacked up four wheel drive <laughs> Dodge pickup with roll bars, with Kansas City uh, KC lights mounted on the front. And running boards and all decked out crushed velvet interior super kick-ass stereo i never would have guessed that oh. knowing you now oh yeah i've i've changed to the years but uh that was my vehicle of choice and um i think we had went out uh lisa and my wife sarah had worked at taco bell at the time and you know you get off from work it's by the time you do your cleanup and, and all that it was one o'clock in the morning or one thirty or whatever it was and you often we would kind of sit around or go to somebody's house or whatever afterwards and, you know, just kind of talk. And that subject got brought up and it's like, well, I know where that's at. I'll take you. And at the time, Lisa was like, oh, that sounds great. Let's go do this. So fast forward about 30 minutes because it was only about a 30, 45 minute drive. We headed out West 32. And again, by this time, it's probably 2.30 in the morning. And we come across this bridge and it's a one lane bridge. It was to the point where the big mirrors on the side of my truck would almost hit the sides. And the thought was you just drive over the bridge and you park. And then you could hear noises. There would be like scratching at the bottom of the bridge. 
So we wanted to go and, you know, experience all this. Lisa, total meltdown, got up there with the truck, parked, crawls in the fetal position down in the passenger, the floorboard, to the point of almost crying. And it wasn't the fact of ghosts or anything like that. She thought the truck was going to cave through Uh this wooden plank bridge. But when I went to start the truck, it didn't want to start. Ooh. So that added kind of a, oh my, there may be a little something here. And that, of course, just freaked her out even more. You probably know me well enough that I see oh, those moments up. of pause. And I'm like, oh, oh no, the, the <laughs> truck won't even start. We're not going to be able to get off it. We're going to fall through the bridge. She is freaking out like, cl- like a cat in a glass enclosed shower. I mean, like, Hands clawing on the glass. Leave me out of here. Well, you couldn't open the door because you would hit the bridge. There was no getting out of this truck. Wow. I mean, until you pulled off the bridge. I thought it was all fun and games. I did feel just a just wee a pinch bad. A pinch bad by the time we, I, I did start it up and uh, we got to the other side and she slugged me in the shoulder so hard. I probably would had a bruise for a week. And she said, we are never going back out there again. I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, we did visit that, that location several times and there was talk that they may actually tear it down because it had gotten so bad. I think they have closed it, but there's some locals that are trying to, you know, save it and everything. Never really experienced anything besides the truck kind of sputtering, not wanting to start over, which was weird because that didn't happen normally with that truck. Well, when I posed the question, I thought I had the answer. And then literally as we've been talking as you, you've you told your story, it reminded me of another story that's probably more appropriate, actually. Uh, when we were late teens, very, very early 20s, especially me and a friend named Zach, we used to go running around a lot. And Zach was into supernatural stuff like I was. I think you brought up Zach before. And he, he well, he, he's the one that kind of turned me on to a lot of the things now that I'm aware of. And even a lot of things, like m- there were movies that he got me watching, music. You he know, was he, a kindred he was, spirit. He was somebody that, that really had a lot of influence on my life. And it's just kind of a shame how things happened between us. We had a falling out, you know, such as life. Things happen. Yep. And, and, you know, we can't change what's, what's already done. But we used to drive around with friends of ours quite a bit. I, I was dating a young lady at the time that I'd gone to high school with. And I can't remember specifically who was with us, but there was at least one other person, probably my girlfriend's friend. And we would run around a lot and just do stuff. And he would, oh, I know this great spooky place. And he would take us here or there or whatever. And he would tell us these crazy stories about the folklore of the area. And you might be horrified, terrified of what was happening when nothing was really going on just because you got yourself all in that headspace. Oh, definitely. But I remember we were driving down this gravel road one night and it was a real narrow road. I mean, is that, that single lane road bridge thing is what kind of popped it into my head. And... I mean, it's just barely enough room for my, my buddy's car. Like we're on this one lane gravel road and it's a sedan style car. So it's a little longer, you know, it's not a compact or anything. Right. And as we're driving, we see headlights up ahead of us. Now he gets over just as far as he can. His tires are in the ditch. There's weeds brushing the side of his car and this black sports sporty type car. I'm not a car guy, but you know, that kind of like a muscle car almost Mm -hmm. goes by. And we don't really look at it. We're not, we don't, you know, we don't watch it go by. We don't look at the driver or anything. We just, we're dive, we're talking, we're joking around. Yeah. We get maybe another 10 feet. I am not exaggerating. Like we didn't get, it's surely no more than two car lengths from where we passed this car. We come to a place where it's like we have pulled up to the edge of like the Rio Grande River. <laughs> like. There's river bottom. It's it's like there was a low water bridge that was just removed. Oh, wow. Like a gorge with a river yeah. in the bottom. Okay, gotcha. I mean, we're not talking like the beginning of Evil Dead crazy, but still, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a drop off here that you're not driving a car and down. what area is this? Um, Probably Dixon, Crocker, maybe okay. Rawlish type area, okay. that direction. Central. I Missouri can't remember exactly ish. where. But yeah, there is this drop off and there is no way you're getting a car over the edge of this thing. Like you're going to. You but know what I mean? This car came we from We passed this car. Hmm. My buddy can't turn his car around. There's not enough room. He has to back up to the last little driveway, side road, whatever that we passed so he can back into it to turn around to go back the way we came. We didn't even think about it until he started backing up. 
And like, it was like, whoa, hold on a minute. Where'd that, minute, car, where'd come that other from? car come from? Wow. So either they turned and backed down that road, which I think would be an iffy prospect, <laughs> or we potentially encountered a ghost car of some kind. But That's I don't crazy. know where that car came from. I, I could and of not course, tell the you. car had to be black. I, mean, I remember yeah, being nice. black. Nice touch, yeah. So, All right. Well, my question, I'm going to make simple. It's a multiple choice question, Bill. <laughs> so if the goat man is real, and obviously several people do believe it is, my question to you is this. What do you think the origin is? Is it A, a mythical race of creature? B, a science experiment gone bad? C, some form of a summoning with a satanic demonic entity aspect to it, or D, a story of revenge of someone that was wronged in real life. I would go with a modified A. Modified A. I don't think it's a mythological creature. Okay. I would say that maybe it's something like a Sasquatch type thing. A cryptid. It's a cryptid. It's a creature that maybe has existed or maybe is lumped in. Maybe it's part of. Maybe when people see it, they're just like, oh, it looks like a goat, man. Hmm. You know, and, and, and I, like, like we said earlier in the episode, there are some of these stories that definitely bleed over into the Bigfoot territory. Oh, definitely. So, definitely. And besides, with all the stories that the natives of America have told over the years, mm-hmm. you know, again, I, I think that every bit of folklore has some element of truth in it somewhere. Yes. I would agree so I that. would say that it's a creature. I don't know that mythological is the right way to say okay. it, but. Fair enough. You know, if, if there is a goat man, it, it would be something like that. Like a cryptid creature. I, I hate to be boring, but I, that was my choice as well. And that's actually <laughs> why I put it as A. However, I would really love to think about it as the whole Marvel concept, comics concept of Government science experiment, experiment gone, wrong. gone bad. And I, I loved your story that you mentioned with the train that, you know, possibly it was a science experiment gone bad and this goat man escaped, yeah. you know, off. The, I, I love that aspect. Well, that Maryland goat man that came from what the Beltsville agricultural thing. Mm-hmm. Apparently so many people believe that story that they have had to publicly state that they do not conduct genetic experiments on men or goats in that facility. Because you would be the first to admit you did, right? Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're mm-hmm. saying there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We oh, lie. yeah, we totally did that. The government's lying to us. <laughs> <laughs> the government would never lie to never. us. Never. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed our enlightened tales of multiple goat, men. goat men of America. And we don't mean that sexist, but it's goat, just that goat men. Well. Goat man. Goat, there's no goat women. If you think of some of the out-of-way places that the goat men have been sighted, if some lonely redneck ran across a bare-chested goat lady, mm. I don't think that story ends the same way. Uh, that. I just skeeved myself out a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we appreciate you putting up with us and listening to us and allowing us to at least make you turn your eyes a little and perk your ears for yet another tale that you're here on Nightmares on the Lost Highway. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, real quick, call to action. I think Eric would agree. We'd like to grow this. Nightmares on the Lost Highway. Absolutely. If you could, if you're listening on Apple, if you would go and give us a review and, and rate us. Uh, if you have some feedback, that's fine too. Uh, whatever whatever platform you're listening, follow us, rate us, give us some reviews. That helps get some recognition and gets our name out there. We do have a Facebook page, Nightmares on the Lost Highway. You can easily find us if you want to communicate with us. If you want to share some uh possibilities for future podcasts with us you know reach out we want to talk with you guys covered in horse hair nope horse hair that makes Uh, no sense like what reports of uh the reports of the pope or nope reports of the lake worth monster the pope nope nope (laughs) want to take a time to thank the people that helped bring this all together uh alex tudor you can almost call him our producer at this point Sarah Tudor who also helps with some of the technical stuff I want to take a moment to extend thanks to Eric for letting us use his space to record in kind of our makeshift studio I in turn would like to thank Bill for one putting up with me and uh, (laughs) using this camaraderie to do something we both very much love and enjoy doing and thank Bill's family for allowing him to spend all the time to work and clean up our recordings and present them and what uh, you hear in the final uh, terms 
uh, the final edition, if you will. And I'd like to thank all of you for continuing to, to listen. I know we've got some loyal followers out there. We do this as a labor of love, but we're, we're happy that there are people that enjoy it, as, hopefully, as much as we do. Thank you very much.